Today on Locked On Red Wings, Scotty and I both saw the Unrivaled documentary. Everyone should go watch and see that because it's awesome, and we're going to break that down today. You're Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a producer over at 97 Won the Ticket. Well, Scotty is a freelance journalist for the Detroit News and host over at the Lockdown Tigers. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Now, it is possible, Scotty, that if you go on Bet Online right now, they may have <laughs> odds on whether or not you have COVID. <laughs> They might, man. They might. Yeah, no, I'm. Uh, I'm not. I'm not doing too hot, but uh, but we ball, as everybody knows, we ball and we push through. And uh, there was no way I, I was missing. Um, you know, us talking about that documentary. But yes, if I if my voice gets really messed up in the middle of this, or if I have to mute myself and <laughs> have a cough Off. attack or something, I, it has not been a very uh, very pleasant day. Do what I did uh, the other night and just clear your throat right in the microphone. Just right. don't even un- – unashamed. Right. <laughs> you know? Yes, of course, of course, yeah. Um, But, yeah, we're going to talk about the Unrivaled documentary. But first and foremost, mm. I guess we kind of got to address the fact that the Colorado Avalanche have won the Stanley Cup. Um, they beat the Tampa Bay Lightning in six games in Tampa Bay, uh, winning 2-1. to one. Cal McCarr wins the Conn Smythe. Darren Helm gets his second career ring. I think I said a couple weeks ago that he hadn't had one. For some reason, I thought his rookie season was 09. But yeah, he was an integral part of that 08 Stanley Cup team as a, as a rookie. So he gets a second ring. And um, it's kind of a great launching point into Unrivaled. But I guess before we get to that, Scotty, like, what were your thoughts on this series? How are you feeling about Colorado Avalanche winning the Stanley Cup for the first time since, I think, what, 2001? Yeah. No, it, you know, it was funny. I haven't felt an ounce, though, Slick. I haven't felt an ounce of, like resentment or I don't want the abs to win and whatever. And like, we've known that this doc was coming and I was like, Oh, it's a different era whatever. I finished watching the documentary um, at the beginning of this game. Like I was, I literally finished in right at the start of game six. And I'll tell you what I, for like five minutes after the cup, I was like, this is lame. F all <laughs> these dudes. What, what are we talking about? This is the avalanche. Whack. Like, screw, screw all of you, right? Like I, I was I was pissed for like five minutes. And then I went back to how I was. I was like, all right. Uh, I just watched Completely the documentary. Different teams. Uh, like, I just watched the documentary. I'm all riled up. That's probably all it is. But uh, but I, I, I will say that for a little bit there, I felt emotions mm-hmm. that I had not felt toward the abs the entire series. And it's just because I happened to watch the documentary the same day. But um, no, you know, look, I, I think the better team won. I think the uh, uh, look, the, the abs are, are unreal. And free agency is going to be really interesting to see who they hold on to and everything. And, and honestly, on the flip side, like Tampa – Free agency for Tampa gets really interesting because they got a lot of players that are kind of in the loom there that that could uh, start breaking apart, and that's you know a team that has made the Cup three years in a row. Like that's uh, and any any change that happens within their roster is going to be big news. But as far as the series go, I I I, I thought the better team won. I, I thought the Av. I, what did I say? Avs in five. I think yeah, is what I said. I, I like, took Tampa, but yeah, you got it. I think I think I took as so you know game off little little more tricky of a road but um, yeah I, I I honestly the the coolest part of this this entire Stanley Cup for me was just uh, the fact that I I think the two best teams in the NHL played for the Stanley Cup and that's that never cool and, and not something you get to say every year so I, I was very glad that it was that matchup even though I don't really care for either of them. Um, on a, on a fandom level, but, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, great hockey. God, oh, yeah. great hockey. It is really like, so first of all, I want to point out that Corey Perry has made the Stanley cup final three straight years and lost every single year. Like he's wow. the new Marion house. Right. Yeah. Cause the true. last two years he was on, um, 
He was on Montreal last year, and then the year before that was Dallas. He was with Dallas, and who lost to Tampa Bay, and then he joins Tampa Bay to go to the Stanley Cup final and then lose to the Colorado Avalanche. But um, Colorado, I agree, was, you know, I I don't know if they they were the better team in the series, but on paper, I think Tampa Bay is definitely there. I think Tampa Bay had a lot of fatigue, but Colorado just was swarming them pretty much every single game. And um, I I hold no resentment towards Colorado. Obviously, like you said, it's a completely different team, decades apart. And I think I, it, that's the Colorado team I definitely wanted to see win a cup because they were so well built. If that was it, if that was a team that ended I up love going McKinnon, couples, man. Ma- I really McCarr, uh, uh, yeah, so much fun for real. I and, like seriously, like no, no, no resent. There was like, like I said, there was like five minutes where I was like, screw all these people. But uh, <laughs> after I after I remembered what year it was, I was like, all right, whatever, this is fine. Well, like, so going back into the documentary, which I guess is where we'll we'll, we'll kind of transition into that now and talk the rest I mean, of the, the episode about the talk of the talk of of the town, man. Yeah, it's it was first of all the documentary was phenomenal, mm. but going from the documentary and watching how that style of hockey was played, like there was a lot of skill still in it, but it was much more rough and tumble. You know, fights just broke out. You know, people weren't afraid to throw fists. To now, where it's highly skill based you know it's all about this finesse and the goal scoring which is fun in its own way but it's like watching two different sports i mean almost all together but that documentary from start to finish i will say let me say the one one thing i will have negative to say about the documentary because the rest of it was great i will say that i feel like it the context is important to everything that had happened the context is very important But it was like an hour and 15 minutes before we got to March 26th. And like, yes, the setting up to like, oh, the Red Wings chased Waugh out of Montreal to Colorado. And that, oh, Claude Lemieux was with New Jersey Devils a year before and won the Stanley Cup after beating the Detroit Red Wings then went to Colorado. That's all important context. But I felt like maybe they they, they hung too long on those elements and the documentary kind of dragged a little bit. But that was the only, that's my only complaint. Because even the stuff that I felt dragged was phenomenal. Like it was a very minor complaint, very very minor, for sure. So so here's my thing. I I I agree with you, but I, I agree with your work, but I disagree with your answer. So mm-hmm. like I I completely agree that it took a while to get to that point. My mindset is, I liked how much detail that yeah. there was leading up to it, but I I think this documentary could have been four hours long. Is well, my they, what I took out of it. They I, I think gone even that, further. Right, exactly, and and so that's my thing is like, I and they could have done the the huge breakdown they did on on March twenty sixth, <clears throat> on March twenty sixth, they could have done that big of a breakdown for for the second one, right? Mm-hmm. Like in ninety eight, like they absolutely could have. And they kind of like they touched on it, which people a lot of people don't know really that ninety eight had a brawl of its own as well. Right, no, ex- and like that. That's my point is like they could have, they could have dove into into 98 to the same extent that they did 96 and and they could have gone even further like past 2002 and like gone into you know all the all the and and they could have even gone into post retirement they didn't even talk about the fact that all these dudes are like still in front offices and, oh, and everything and the and, and of like clout in those interviews they, yeah oh well they said at the end right 20 hall of famers my goodness but the you know the the only really kind of thing they did at the end where it was like hey like this is still a rivalry was when, when Drape said like, no, I don't forgive him. And then it ended. Right. So like, that yeah. was, that was like the, the, you're supposed to be like, Oh, like this is, you know, it's this still is fit, probably man. will right like a never dying thing between these two people at a personal level, which I, I would, I doesn't surprise anybody. I don't think, but I, I, what I got out of it wasn't like, Oh, it dragged on or, or Oh, I, I, I think it took too long to get there. I just wanted more. Like I wanted this to be four hours long because I think that there is enough content to put into four hours long. But um, you know, it was an E60 that already ran for one twenty. Yeah. So I'm not sure they had too much more, uh, too much more of a leash there. Well, I'm like, so I, they basically ended it after '98 championship. Like they touched on the fact that they both won one more cup and like right. you know when they, they did the, an outro thing. But yeah, yeah. but like that that rivalry, you know, maybe. It, died a little bit but they met so many more times especially in the playoffs and then they both won one more cup in that stretch you know i wish they would have been like oh the colorado Avalanche." you know this is me my bias as a red wings fan been like oh well the wings won one more cup in 08 and then the, right at the same time as colorado went into a full rebuild which i mean now they're coming out they of just and they won a Stanley cup, cup right but, now <laughs> yeah, literally today so. uh, that's just my red wings bias i did like <laughs> there there's one thing that i really loved about this e60 and it was 
I guess it's in the same vein as, you know, I had this this gripe that maybe dragged on too long in the beginning with the setup, but I think that that complaint is also a strength because of exactly what they did with this particular player. And I'll tell you what that is right after I talk to you guys today about Bet Online. That's a tease right there, Scotty. Great ATs. Yeah, it is. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your bet- betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online, where the game starts. Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Scotty and I are talking about the E60 Unrivaled documentary about the uh, uh, 90s rivalry with late 90s, early 2000s rivalry between the Colorado Avalanche and the Detroit Red Wings. And I want to tell you about the thing that I loved most about this um, documentary is how much it painted and maybe I'm a little biased, but it felt like they were really hard trying to paint Claude Lemieux like the villain in this. It almost felt like at times, and there are at times where they made them, they made made the Red Wings painted the Red Wings as like crybabies about the whole situation. But it definitely felt like they spent like a good 20 minutes talking about Claude Lemieux in in New Jersey before he got traded to Colorado and how they eliminated the Detroit Red Wings and how Claude Lemieux had this reputation of being you know, an agitator that would never fight, you know, a la Brad Marchand uh, in the current NHL. And so they they painted this very big picture of like Claude Lemieux as like a villain almost. And he owned it. A lot of times he owned it in the NHL. And so it almost felt like the Red Wings, and this is my bias because they, they, they mean, they talked a lot fairly about the Colorado Avalanche and about how like his teammates loved him and stuff like that. And like how, you know, on the, uh, off the ice and Derek McCarty and them have a friendship now and, Blah, yada, yada, yada. But I really liked that it felt as if the Detroit Red Wings were almost the heroes in the story. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, vindication. <laughs> sweet, sweet vindication. Yeah, so that that's that was my like biggest thing, too, is I would love to ask an Avalanche fan how they felt about it because I, I don't have anybody in my circle that's an Avs fan or anything like that. And And if you do, cut them out. Correct. And I and I, I genuinely would like to know what what uh, I guess it wouldn't be too hard to find. Like, you know, you just stumble onto Av's Twitter and like you could figure it out, I guess. But I, I would love to get the 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 pulse on, on that fan base and how they felt about it, because it, it, it really is. I, I agree with you. And, and you know, I, I thought the arc of Lemieux, they actually handled pretty level-headedly. Like they, they did a really good job covering Claude Lemieux in general. Yeah, like they they did, you know, the, the beginning and how he was, his reputation and everything. And then as everything that happened happened and how he handled everything. And then, uh, you know, like the, the end arc where um, he, whatever, like end, post-career and, and now like Cider's agent ending it with that and everything. So... It's it's definitely um, it's it's I, I thought they handled his arc really well and like the the constant back and forth with the McCarty inner you know dual interview definitely helped that as well but um, I I just I think when it came to the two teams that's where I I completely agree with you I think that this was painted in the sense of like the Red Wings got the upper hand. And like, even at the very end, they were like wings, three cups, abs, two cups. Yeah. Like the wings. Right. Like I, I, I felt as though, and then like the Konstantinov thing, like everything about it. And, and it, it just like, they covered both teams equally and they covered both teams well, and they covered the rivalry well from both sides. And I, I don't think, in the midst of it, they made anyone like, oh, like this is good guy, bad guy necessarily. But at the end, I, I just I'm not sure how any third party fan watches that and goes like, well, like I'm an Avs fan now. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I can't imagine. I, I very much agree with you when it comes to to the the, the team aspect for sure. I really liked uh, the Brendan Shanahan bits too about like how they traded for him and he came in and he's like, okay, well, oh. there's all this pressure with the avalanche rivalry and I have to make myself feel like I have to like get myself into this rivalry that 
I haven't been part of in this, the building of, and like almost how Claude Lemieux almost bit himself in the ass mm -hmm. by like instigating with Brennan Shanahan, who he admits he's like, it's my dirty little secret, but I was friends with Claude right. Lemieux because we played together with the devils. And so it's like, I do like force myself to hate this man. And like the first game of the conference finals that year. Claude yeah. He Lemieux made it easy for him. for him. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, like easy. that's like, my thing. Threat. Like, like I understand, like you're, you know, you're a competitor. Mm -hmm. You're going to say stuff. But if Claude had that insight to know that, like, Hey, like Shan still like loves you, dog. Like if he's like, had like that, into that, right? I would have been like, oh, like good luck today, buddy. You know what I mean? Like you, you make gotta, it hard for him to hate, right? You. Exactly. But but Claude the Muse, Claude the Mew, and he just makes it so easy to want to sucker punch him in the face. Um, well, it's another thing too is I think it. I think a lot of people have this picture in their head of Claude Lemieux as just a goon, but he is very much like he was very much a skill player as well. Like he scored a lot oh, of goals. Yeah. He won the Con Smythe with uh, the Devils in ninety five or ninety six, rather. No, ninety five. Yeah. Sorry, player. no, wait, yeah, 96. no. He he won Why the Smythe he... with 95. the Devils in ninety five. Oh my yeah. god, I just it's had right. a massive brain fart. Sorry, it's before I was born. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so like it, he's very much also like he was a goal scorer he was a star in the nhl in his own right so yeah but the the, the brent shannon stuff was interesting and like added context but then when they got finally got like they covered the draper thing and they they go into big depth and why i thought was this heated blood feud i thought the draper coverage was fantastic i thought everything they did with drapes was was absolutely fantastic from start to finish and and you know the craziest part is that and, like, I, I guess in hindsight, like, it makes sense. But in the interview, you can see yeah. that he still has the dent. Like, and it will forever be there. And when you you're, know they were lighting it that way to accentuate. I, it I'm sure. I'm sure. But, like, it's crazy how that's not something I ever thought about. Like, I, like we, you know, we've heard the stories. And then we've heard, you know, the, the like, how bad it was and seeing all the pictures and everything. Like, as what Red Wings fans, we've seen it. But I... It's just like that's the first time that I, I I was sitting there and I was looking at him talking in the middle of the conversation when they were like, yeah, like imagine a 90 degree angle just going. And I was like, what? The, like, there's it. a dent in this man's face still 20 years later. Like it, it, it I, and like at the very end, I thought that was a great way to end it. Mm -hmm. Right. Like just like, will you ever forgive him and him thinking and going? No, nah. no. And then like and like I that is a that is a perfect end. Like it, it really it was it was unbelievably well because well it, it comes down to like the hit itself was cool, like super dirty and For you sure. hit him from the numbers right into the dasher and the dasher part could have just like that's unfortunate but the, the hit is like textbook hitting from behind match penalty For sure. there's no bones about it and then he goes on to never apologize because he has to continue to make himself the villain that is his role he recognizes it so he continues to make himself the villain never apologize about it to this day like they talk about how like at the 2015 draft club when came up to him right, and like, yeah. how, how's he doing introduced himself to his family and stuff like that and like draper was like was there more to that was he trying to make amends because they're like they're they're past it now like they're as past it as they can be like darren mccarty and claude like considered them darren mccarty said in the like dual interview like they're friends now they're past it and that was the whole point of that dual interview was to be like it stayed on the ice but like clearly for someone who's had a life changing face facial fracture, right. you never get an apology. It has a huge impact, which is what led to the huge blood feud, which led to the coverage of the March 26th um, right. game, which th that that particular portion of that interview, I think my biggest highlights of the entire documentary were the March 26th game, obviously the fight night at the Joe and then the coverage of the Konstantinov incident afterwards. For that sure. coverage of March 26th, like they covered it from like a thousand different angles, and it was really impressive. Oh, because dude. everything's happening. The amount of the amount of role they had, and, and like a role, b role, like the amount of role they had. Period for the entire thing was unbelievable. Yeah, but the amount of footage they had for the for for March 26th that like is not common footage was unbelievably cool oh dude it was well like they always had this like background footage too like all like this like gary thorne up in the press box like fixing his tie getting ready for dude, the game also and why are we not handing gary thorne a blank check i don't, I don't why know. is espn not handing gary thorne a blank he check and going like so hey good. man what's also, good why don't you come back bud also shout out to wojo for being in there i did not Whoa, expect him to yeah there. man wojo getting getting some work and, and it's cool too he wore it too man he was like yeah i really, I really he's like i really laid into these mfers like golly 
yeah, my good, good for Woj. Good for colleague Woj. of mine over at 97 on ticket just genuinely phenomenal person super oh, yeah. nice guy yeah. like Incredible i'm a part-time producer being. and he's like compared to me like you know this big shot radio guy also like veteran at the detroit news he covered like he was in the he was yeah, in the documentary because he wrote an article he big, got cussed out deal. by the gm of the avalanche at the time he's and it's a just very like, big deal at the detroit news still yes seeing him in for, there for, like, a, oh, like, for love a that reason. guy yeah well just great great if, stuff great if stuff. anyone ever has like the opportunity to meet wojo like you'd love him he's such a nice yeah. guy Very um much so. But the coverage of that ninety that 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 brawl just absolutely killer, absolutely mm. stunning. Um, obviously, there was. I think my favorite part was Brendan Shanahan breaking away from Adam Foot, and like Adam Foot and Peter Forsberg were like so like oh. lighthearted about the whole thing the whole time. You know like, who was great? I thought Peter Forsberg was fantastic, oh, yeah. fantastic, and like like Joe was too, right? Like he he was, but like you know, he's the captain, like of course. I thought Forsberg was like was really really. He's like I got teared, uh, tied up with Larry. I was Larry. Like the quotes he had yeah. were really like resonated. I thought he he was great. But like they interviewed the trainer, they interviewed the photographer. Interviewing the photographer was beautiful. The guy who took oh, the such famous a cool turtle moment. photo. Yeah, such a cool moment. Ah, uh, just and then so you have Brendan Shanahan breaking away from Adam Foot, and Adam Foot's like talking about. It. He's like I, I'm like I, I'm tied up with Brendan Shanahan. I'm all of a sudden he turns and runs away. I'm like what is going on? It's like then all of a sudden I see. Patrick Waugh, and, and I go, oh, no. No, my favorite <laughs> thing is the motion he did. He was like, I see Waugh. <laughs> he goes like this. <laughs> so funny. And then uh, I, I think the like the Lemieux things, you know, the turtling, that he the, – the fact that they – I think it was also important that they added the context that he had made himself well-known for turtling. Like, they showed Correct. many clips of him, like, players going after him, finally had enough of his BS, and then just beating the crap out of him, and he just every time turtles. And so, Correct. like – Everyone knows that famous photo, but he has a history of that. He never would fight back. Yeah, he finally fought back in 98. Photos. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. Exactly. It, it Which, again, I thought was really big to, like, the, the Lemieux arc of this documentary. I thought him, you know, fighting back and kind of ending-ish. Like, they went into Vlad, I think, after mm -hmm. that. So, like, you know, that kind of ended, like, the brawl, brawl part of it. And, like, yeah, for sure. Well, then, like, the, focusing on, like, Vernon and Ra Wa fighting. And then, like, mm. my, Brennan Shannon's joking, like, Vernon's, like, the nicest guy. Dude, so just, the fact there, that they highlighted, you can see him like, laughing. Shannon laughing. <laughs> it's, like, the most bloody, like, gory, like, two just teams of warriors going at each other. Like, the biggest brawl, like, one of the biggest brawls in American sports history and Brennan Shanahan's just in the corner giggling because he's like, huh, like, Vern would never do this. Like, what? I just, it got Chris Osgood on the bench laughing as well. I just, Dude, I, I wanted, I wanted them to ask current day Ozzy about, uh, about the comments that he made after that, the game where he's like, he's not that then, strong or whatever, you know? I, I'm, I'm curious too because they didn't, there were, quite, I mean, there's so many players involved in this and so many Hall of Famers involved in this. Yeah, impossible interview. They didn't interview everybody. Chris Osgood, which I thought was interesting because, I mean, he's a broadcaster. Like, you would think anyone who would be well spoken Yeah, but I, like, he, he was so young and, like, you know, at the beginning of the rivalry, it, really, it was still Vern's net yeah, and everything, well, you know. I was surprised they didn't get Fedorov um, to some extent. It's uh, that like, that one surprised me a little bit for sure. Maybe maybe, it's, um, maybe they just think his English wasn't good enough, or maybe he was un maybe. inaccessible because of his time in KHL right now. Well, also yeah, with everything around Russia in general, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> a little might inaccessible. Have, that might, uh, I don't know how long they've been working on it, but yeah. Um, and, and you know, like hearing, uh, you heard from Steve a little bit, but he wasn't super prominent. Yeah, and like that's, it's, you know, most that's the McCarty, captain really. of the entire thing. It, it was. And, and like, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it, with context to the rivalry, it makes sense that it was mostly uh, Darren and Claude for sure. Going but, into um, Draper and McCarty's friendship was phenomenal, too. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And, and like the biggest thing for me after watching it was. Well, there, there was a lot. Uh, I, I think one of the first things that came in that came to my mind after like the final credits, like after everything was done, was just like how lucky are we? Like how many fan bases had like the bad boys thirty for thirty and now this? Like how many fan bases have two of like the best documentaries there are that like ESPN, like you know, the leader in sports, like how how many fan how many cities have like like New York, obviously, and L.A. obviously has a few and stuff. But how, how many cities have two different documentaries highlighting their like team's excellence? 
like that. You're like that's a, that's such a cool to have well, that and have the Bad Boys documentaries both be so well done and so famous within like the sports community and the sports documentary community. It, it's just it's a very I, I was very appreciative afterwards of just like you know for for as much rightfully for as much crap as we give national media for not giving us enough love it's it's cool to 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 have you know these every once in a while i think it was really too um i think it was the Konstantinov stuff that was super well covered as well like even having the footage absolutely even having the footage of them right before the accident like literally them at the golf club at the golf that was that gave me goosebumps man like that's chilling we saw vladimir konstantinov literally hours before life-altering injury and getting him to be in the interview and just like we don't we don't hear a lot about konstantinov that much anymore like for the most part he's kind of his life is kept private and like that's that justifiably so but he he um He's in there, you know, like For sure. they asked him the questions and he answered and like, it's like Vlad, Vladdy is still very much in there. And it's just, it's, it, the coverage of it was so his daughter. Oh, the daughter was phenomenal. It was so, so emotional, man. So like great. it was, I'm lucky that I saw that chunk of it at LCA before I got to see it again on Sunday for the first time fully. Because like when I saw it at LCA, like it was like, damn, like I could very much, I was fighting back the tears at that point. I did it was cry, so yeah. Sad. And like, I, I, I feel like garbage. I already feel like crap. <laughs> now I, I was, yeah, it was, yeah, I, I absolutely did. The '98 Stanley Cup, like they, I'm so glad that they win because I was a little afraid it would just be about the brawl and then you know getting revenge in '97, winning the cup. But I'm glad they went past that in the '98 fight. You know, then facing Colorado again, and our Colorado didn't. Uh, I think they got knocked out in the first round that year, and so then to see Eisenman hand the cup off to Konstantinov. That's, that was iconic. fascinating to me. The the absolutely iconic, yes. But the fascinating thing to me was I'm glad that they they had that Steve footage in there because you could tell that Steve he admitted it, but you could see it in the moment, in the flashbacks, and in the present day. He said he was like, I, I had a lot of mixed emotions then. I I like everybody views it as like this really you know, like iconic, like crazy, happy moment. And he's like, I, I had a lot. I was still furious that he wasn't in, you know, in a New Jersey and in, yeah, in uniform on and on skates. Like I, I was, I was, he's like, I'm glad we got to do it, but I had a lot of mixed emotions. And after he said that they cut to him wheeling, you know, flat around. And it's, it's crazy to see everybody else is like smiling and laughing. And the captain of the Detroit Red Wings who just Somber. won his second cup He's just like pretty straight face the entire time while he's wheeling Vladdy around. And then when like Vladdy's on the big screen, right? That moment that they had where he stands up and, and waves and is on the big screen. And McCarty says, that's when I knew we were going to win the cup. And everybody's like cheering and stick tapping. And Eiserman's at the back of the bench, not even on the bench. He's where the coaches are standing. Just again, like straight face. I know that's kind of like Steve always a little bit, but like he just won the freaking cup, dog. Yeah, and like I, he I, certainly wasn't like that after the first one. So like it, it, it was just really weird to go from him saying I had a lot of mixed emotions to then seeing that like yeah, you can very clearly tell that he had some mixed emotions. It, it was it was a really tough part, and I think they handled it very respectfully as well. For sure, um, it it was the, as a whole like the documentary was so good. beat them. It, Best way to end it. Best, Best way, way to, end to end it. it. Like it like his answers felt like. He, he called them bad and stuff like that. He was yeah. like, how do you, when I say Colorado Avalanche, wh- how do you feel? Bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> like it was, it was just great. Like I, the whole documentary as a whole, I, I can't hammer home enough. Like if you guys have ESPN plus subscription, you can go watch it right now. I'm right sure they're going to be playing replays on cable too. They are. They, they already announced it. I don't remember off the top of my head, but they are. I think it's Monday night at 8 PM. I believe there they're you go. Uh, airing it again. It might be on ESPN too. I can't quite remember. But that documentary just beautiful through and through. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, and then that little that little bow at the end to be like, and you know they had to have edited that in very quickly. But like Moritz Sider is one of the right, yeah. stars. He just won the Calder. Claude Lemieux is his agent. Correct. Like it's just a nice little cherry on top to be like, yeah, you got to play nice with this guy now. 
<laughs> right. Yeah. And like the controller. McCarty. Yeah. My, when McCarty said that too, he's like, he's trying to help us win a cup. Like that was, you know, again, yeah. like for the, for the, for the character arc of, of both of them, they're not characters, they're real people, but you get what I'm saying? Like the arc of, of, of the documentary for sure. It's just, it, it really, I got goosebumps a lot of times, a lot of times. Um, what, when the, when the, str- the couple of streak ended, that was a big one. Uh, that was awesome. Just reliving that. Oh, well, uh, you know, reliving in the sense that I've seen it before. I wasn't alive yet, but just like g- being able to be placed in that moment for 30 seconds of just like, wow. Cause like, that's the thing we, we remember that era as such a dominant, like the wings were dominant. They were the team of the nineties. They carried that in. They were the team of the early two thousands. Nobody could beat them. Hall of Famers on the fourth line in 02. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just yeah. like this. 25 a quarter of a century straight of postseason like everybody talks about them in such like high regard as they should it's just it's it's very fascinating to remember like until they got the first one they were considered to be like the biggest choke artist in sports they were the washington capitals that was literally their reputation was these guys are soft and they are the biggest chokers in all four sports they have the most talented roster in the league every year and they can never win a damn cup and like finally you know seeing all the emotion from the city and the team after they finally won and everything. It was just, it was cool to be placed in that moment. And then all the Vlad stuff was just goosebumps the whole time, the whole time. Um, the, I mean, there, there's, there's so much there, there's, there's so many, you know, a lot of the Draper moments for sure. Uh, a lot of McCarty quotes, you know, like you said, him and, and Draper's uh, like friendship and everything. There there were so many, like I, 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 I'm weird. And so like, I, fall asleep to like sports documentaries because that's like what relaxes <laughs> right me this, man. Uh, that that's like what relaxes me right like that's what like i that's my life and so like this <laughs> uh, i'm gonna be watching this a lot i guess is my point it's good stuff man good stuff um i guess i'm gonna end this on like hard pivot like i i really i loved the documentary like through and through is absolutely awesome it's fantastic um but i just want to show off my new jersey where no one can even see it I, what do you mean no one can see it no one can see it what Wait. are you pointing to the uh, uh, the mort cider one the camel one you're just being an a-hole aren't you no no one can see what you're okay well okay sure there, yeah, there you, you go. go. <laughs> now we can see it. I was like, no one can see what you're pointing at. The oh, more yeah, insider no, military hard. jersey. It's, sick. it's very cool. Very, very like, cool. Yeah. It's it's fine to show off. I'll, I'll allow it. It's so sick, man. It's, I got it from my work. It was just like sitting around as an extra. And it's like, mine. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Yeah, it's going to be mine now. So military <laughs> sider jersey in my uh, background now. So I had to That's sacrifice hard. the Verlander jersey. I'm sorry. I was oh, running out of space. Right. So hockey it's podcast. Right um we'll be back tuesday uh not really sure what we're going to talk about this week we'll probably have we'll definitely have another prospect profile or two but uh the schedule for this week is very much up in the air and i'm sure we'll bring you great content regardless but we'll see what the future holds and we'll be back on tuesday if scotty's alive word yeah (laughs) word to that golly same time same place see your team Every day. Every day. day.